We're back from break, and thanks for continuing to watch Douglas on my mind. Joining me on the show now is Chief Gary Castellos with the Douglas Police Department. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Glad you're here. Um, kind of sad subject that you have to talk about, but it's one that um, I, we are very glad that you all are bringing more awareness to this year, and that is the subject of domestic violence. If you would, just kind of share with everyone what is domestic violence and what um, constitutes an incident. Okay. Well, uh, just to, to start off, this month is deemed Domestic Violence Month. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the uh, same time every year, uh, and we really try to go out there and promote uh, knowledge of domestic violence. But basically, domestic violence is any felony, uh, commission of offenses such as battery, simple battery, simple assault, uh, stalking, uh, unlawful restraint, as well as other uh, misdemeanor charges. But it has to be specifically tied to an incident involving uh, past or present spouses, mm -hmm. uh, parents and children, step parents, step children, uh, persons living or formerly living in the household. Uh, if, if it's related to those, then it falls under the state's uh, statute for domestic violence. What are some of the different forms of, of abuse that we can name specifically that people go through and experience in the home? Because um, some people may say, oh, I'm not going through domestic violence, but what, what are some of the things you typically see and hear of? Yeah, the problem with most people when you, when you hear the term domestic violence, they automatically assume it's beating someone. Mm -hmm. That's just one type of abuse. I mm -hmm. mean, obviously the physical abuse is there, mm -hmm. but you have the emotional abuse. Right. Right. Uh, you have the psychological view, abuse as well as there's also sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. Those are the four main types of abuse that falls under uh, the domestic violence where the, the batterer tries to get control of mm -hmm. the victim. Mm -hmm. what, what steps should someone take? What, what would you, the Douglas Police Department, advise someone to do if they're going through a domestic violence situation? Because I know I always hear that people are terrified or it takes seven times before, so, before someone really use. I don't know if those stats are even true, but what would you recommend and, and say in regards to that. Well, obviously, I mean, if, if you're a victim of domestic abuse, call the police department. Mm -hmm. The problem is, based on the psychological and emotional aspect, most people don't want to do that or they don't think that they're really a victim of, of domestic violence, but they are. Uh, seek help, mm -hmm. call the police department. Uh, we have resources that, that are available. Uh, you have a, do, a victim advocate with the DA's office. There's, there's several venues. There's, there's, you can go online and report domestic violence. There's also 1-800 uh, uh, numbers. Uh, we got one 1-800 safe haven mm. that we utilize. Mm -hmm. That's a, a women's shelter and everything, but they have information on domestic violence. And I say for friends and family, uh, uh, if you know someone that's in an abusive relationship, mm -hmm. make the call. Mm -hmm. Make the call for them before something happens to them. Okay. Do, do, do you think people don't call out of fear or what, what prevents a person from calling? They don't think there are any resources out there or? Well, a lot of it goes back to, like I said, the, the psychological and emotional. Mm -hmm. A lot of these, these victims, they are, from day one, the, the batterer is trying to get control of them. Uh, makes their, their, feel like they're not worth anything outside the relationship. That that I'm doing you a favor mm -hmm. being married to you mm -hmm. and letting you be around me. So there's a, it's a, a big control thing. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of them afraid to get out, especially if, if it's a woman not working. Now there are male and female victims here. Mm -hmm. It's not just a female type thing. But there's a lot of it's the financial control. Gotcha. Uh, the other part is if there's children in the household, mm -hmm. uh, they'll threaten them with, you'll never have them, you're not gonna see them again, I'm gonna get them. Mm -hmm. Recently what we ended up and I went to a, a training class on this last month on domestic violence, that pets have been a controlling factor for years. You know, a lot of folks, their pets part of their family. I've never even thought of that. And uh, so that these batterers or these abusers were using the pets hmm. as a mechanism to keep the victim in the house and keep them from making that phone call to us. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately now, the, there are resources to even deal with pets now. Mm. Uh, we have resources that we can place pets temporarily while uh, the victim's at a shelter or anything like that. So now that's no longer something in the back of their mind that, that's keeping them from making that call. 
because we can address that as well now. Okay. Well, if you would, please share with us some stats that you see um, in the Douglas area that will help us to understand how prevalent domestic violence is in our area. Well, last year in 2014, we responded to 151 domestic violence calls. Mm. Uh, as of about three weeks ago, we responded to 111 for this year. One of them was a murder-suicide, uh, where the husband killed the wife, then committed suicide, and he actually shot his wife in front of the kids. 90% of the cases out there is done in the presence of children. And uh, those are not good stats, and if you figure that that's probably a third of what's actually going on, because a lot of these crimes do not get reported. Mm -hmm. uh, out of fear, embarrassment, uh, the, the victim doesn't want people to know that, that he or she's going through that. Mm -hmm. uh, recently, uh, I was telling some folks about a, uh, a deputy in another state that was constantly reporting his wife as, as a batterer. And of course, you know, they see this big strong deputy and they're thinking nothing about it. Well, he finally put on a body camera. His wife came home and immediately started battering him mm. and he called the, the local law enforcement again and showed him video and said, I've been telling y'all, it's been going on for years and you're laughing at me. Yeah. So it can happen to anybody. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it goes across cultural, uh, economic, mm -hmm. financial guy. I mean, it's doctors, lawyers, and anyone can be a victim mm -hmm. in, in this case. Well, once someone get the courage to call and uh, report a case of domestic violence, what are some of the resources in place to help offer assistance or a way out? Well, like I said, one of the easiest things to do is contact your local law enforcement mm -hmm. agency. Uh, we have uh, different information available to us, phone numbers to, to utilize. Another good resource is every county uh, district attorney's office has a victim advocate. Uh, he or she uh, has uh, phone numbers and information uh, to go to. We also, whenever we, we respond to call by statute, we have to give out an information pack uh, to victims of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. uh, and it has that information as well as some uh, toll-free numbers to call and some websites to contact. You can also go online and just type in domestic violence on search and it will pull up uh, quite a few uh, websites that you can click on and report uh, this to and, and get assistance. Department of F Family and Children Services also offers uh, a lot of assistance. Uh, we also here locally, we have the Children's Advocacy Center. Mm -hmm. uh, they have information uh, to access the Magnolia House and Waycross as well as uh, other areas to deal with that. And also to go along with that, the Victims Advocate with uh, the county here as well as other counties throughout the state uh, can also help with uh, some financial issues. Uh, uh, if there's medical costs involved, uh, restitution, stuff like that, they have the forms and they'll take that and help prosecute it to mm -hmm. court. Okay, okay. Well, um, once someone, like you said, do make the call, um, what could we, we as a community or individuals, businesses, anyone do to um, offer um, help to eliminate this problem? Well. A lot of us, like I said, a lot of these, these, uh, individ these victims, uh, they're worried about financial help, mm -hmm. uh, medical costs, raising children and everything like that. So they, they have costs and they're looking for ways to help. That's another reason, like I said, why they don't report mm -hmm. it. Uh, as a community, uh, one thing we just have to do is not tolerate it. If you see domestic violence or you got knowledge of it, report it. Right. Uh, you can remain anonymous. We, I mean, we tell folks, call our tips line. Uh, call 911, call our non-administrative, call Victims Advocate, you call defects, any of them, they're going to report it. Mm -hmm. If you go to the hospital and they feel that you're a, a victim of domestic violence, they're going to automatically notify law enforcement. Mm -hmm. They're required by law as well to do that. But as a whole, the community just needs to take a stand and, and not tolerate it, uh, report it when they see it. Right. One thing I didn't mention, and one of the big fears years ago was the victim did not want to be the one to prosecute it. Mm -hmm. The victim had to make the case. Georgia changed their statute years ago where the officer, if they have probable cause, makes the case on the scene. That's that right. takes the burden of prosecution off the victim mm -hmm. so they no longer feel like they're the one doing it, mm -hmm. the state's doing mm -hmm. it. You often see repeat, I, I'm sure you do, but repeat cycles whenever you get a call going back. Is, is that at the point when the officer would get involved and make the report after you have answered a call several times? Well, no, we, we do a report on the first time. First time. 
you you have a, an episode in the in the domestic violence. You get the honeymoon phase, the love and respite phase, and then the battering phase. Mm -hmm. Typically, we get involved in the battering phase because that's when we get the phone call. Mm -hmm. We do a report on every single domestic violence call we get. If there's probable cause to make the arrest, I mean, if we see beating or bruising or, or the house is tore up and everything, we will arrest the primary aggressor. Okay, okay. Well, um, one thing that you all are doing, the Douglas Police Department, um, so during this month, as you said, it's also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I think it's National Bullying Awareness yes. Month and Domestic Violence and maybe some other things going on this month too. But to me, domestic violence does not get as much attention as it needs. So I'm very, um, I commend you all for putting together a workshop that's coming up. And if you would, kind of tell everyone about the workshop, the purpose, and what you're trying to achieve through it. Well, uh, we did some talk this, this earlier this month and, and decided to put on a domestic violence workshop for the general public. Mm -hmm. As law enforcement, we go through annual training on domestic violence. Uh, but we felt the need to kind of get some information out there and make the public more aware about the problems, especially in, in light of the recent murder-suicide we had. Uh, because that kind of raised some eyebrows because people knew what was going on, but nobody ever intervened. And see, what people don't understand that we can intervene. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to get to the point where somebody gets hurt. We can, as law enforcement agency working through the judicial system, intervene and let that victim get help before it gets to the point where yes, they, yes. he or she is, mm -hmm. is, is battered or, or beaten or even killed. Uh, so we decided to put on this workshop. Uh, it's going to be this Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Ware Center, open to the public. Uh, we're also providing a meal so that, that people can come there and eat and not have to work, right, be right. running there. And we wanted to give it time for people to be able to get there mm -hmm. and not be so late in case they have to get home and get right. the children there. Right. But uh, we're going to be talking about what is domestic violence, uh, the different types of domestic violence, uh, the, the legal aspect. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have speakers from um, the district attorney's office, the victim advocate's office, superior court judge, children's advocate center, uh, the Magnolia House, which is the, the women's shelter we right. use in Waycross, uh, as, uh, and prosecutors from state court. Uh, and uh, they're going to be speaking on their role in the, in the process, what they see, and their interpretation uh, of everything that's going on. The superior court judge is going to give uh, his insights from the bench. Uh, and what to expect. Probably talk about uh, protection orders because that's another mm -hmm. avenue available for folks is get that protection order to, to separate mm -hmm. them and give them protection from the batter and everything. Uh, as well as we got a, a, hand, a packets that we're giving out uh, with a lot of information, phone numbers, right. websites right. For, for them to take back. And even if they're not a victim of domestic violence, they can come get this information because I guarantee they know someone that is. That's true. Uh, coworkers, family members, Mm -hmm. uh, they know somebody. Mm -hmm. Get that information, take it back, and, and, and pass it on to them, or even make the call for them. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's where we're at. It, it's, it's getting the information, mm -hmm. and maybe we can intervene in, in, a, in an abusive relationship right now and keep from what right. happened last month happening yes. again. Yes, we definitely don't want tragedies like that in the community. Um, well, I, like I said, I commend you all for the workshop, and that is this Thursday, 27th from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the CE Weir Center, located at 307 East Bryan Street. It's a free workshop, and as you said, many from the local judicial system will be there, yes, and um, the Magnolia House providing our resources and information. So, um, do you have a need for people to help sponsor this event? We are looking for sponsors. Uh, like I said, this is the first time we've done this event. Uh, it's not a budgeted expense for us and everything, so we are looking for sponsors right now right. Uh, to help out uh, with the food as well as, as other items related to it. Uh, and again, we want to make this an annual event, uh, so we will hopefully, out of this, this first one, be able to form some partnerships and continue to do this every year at the same time this month uh, to, to keep it, the word going and, and keep fighting for the domestic violence. Because like I said, even 111 this year, that's way too many. Yes, I, way too I wish many. we didn't have to respond to any right. domestic violence because uh, it's just, just something that affects the community, the, the children, uh, the pets, the, the, the victims. It, it goes across the board. Family members, mm -hmm. they're all affected by mm -hmm. it. Uh, and, and it affects the community as a whole. Okay. All right. So if someone wants more information and 
um, on how to sponsor or some tips or to call the tip line. Give the number and contact information if you will and well, we should call. We're following most of these calls through the uh, call center. Okay.